Hi booktube, Lynette here and this week's video is going to be all about the books that I read in the month of May. May compared to April and March was not quite such a successful month however I have gotten through my TBR that was set for myself or most of it um, and I have picked up a couple of extra books to read. So the first books that I'm going to talk about is actually the three books that I have started but not yet finished. One of them I might finish, um, I'm actually filming this on the 31st of May, so one of them I might finish after I've packed all of this away and done my editing. Um, one of them I might actually finish by before midnight tonight um, and that will count towards May's reading. The first one is um, an audiobook that I've picked up. I rarely listen to audiobooks. I try to get into the habit of listening to them as I walk to work, but my walk to work is so short. Um, it's only 10, 10 to 15 minutes at most. Uh, and because I leave work at the same time as other colleagues, I then always forget to plug myself into it. And it's an even shorter walk home because they walk part way with me. Um, I don't always get as much listening time in as I would like. Um, so I have actually been trying to read a bit more, listen to this a bit more, but at the beginning of the month I caved into all of the hype and I watched Shadow and Bone, and the, which is the Netflix adaptation of Shadow and Bone and I think combined with Six of Crows, which are books by Lee Bardugo. Uh, the book is about um, Alina who is finds out that she is a sun summoner um, in the course of this series which is a very very rare Grisha and she's needed to destroy the fold uh, which was created many hundreds of years before by another Grisha called the Darkling and she is discovering her powers and everything that goes with it. There's also a bit of a romance in there and it's a bit of a love triangle. Um, everybody's always been going on about should she have ended up with Mal or should she have ended up with Darkling and I can understand. I didn't really like Mal um, in the TV show uh, but I loved the Darkling. I can completely understand why people are torn over whether she should have been with Darkling or not. Um, and it doesn't doesn't hurt that the actor they picked to play him, Ben Barnes, is easy on the eye um, and he's especially good looking as the Darkling and I've I've seen him in a couple of things over the years and I've always enjoyed him. Um, yeah, that didn't sound quite right but yeah, I'd like to enjoy him. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so I really, I really enjoyed the TV series and then I'm not a fan of consuming adaptations of books without consuming the book itself and because I already had Shadow and Bone on my um, Audible from my Audible subscription that I used to have I decided that I'd try and listen to it and I've been listening to it in the shower in the mornings I've been listening to it as I walk to work um, I've been putting it on and listening to it when I'm in the flat on my own I'm about halfway through it and I'm enjoying the story as much as I enjoyed the TV series so I do look forward to picking it up I'm um, like I say, I'm about halfway through it and I'm looking forward to potentially finishing it in the month of June. The next book that I picked up was a bit of a punishment book because if you've seen my May TBR then you'll see that there was a confession in that month and that book um, is The Silmarillion by J.R.R. and Christopher Tolkien. This is a telling of the history of Middle Earth and the First Age. Um, I'm about a third of the way through, thoroughly enjoying it. Um, I read it in bits and pieces. It's not one that I can read in one go, but I find that with the Lord of the Rings story as well. Um, the Hobbit is one I can breeze through, um, but then the adult books that were written, I find a bit more tougher going. There's a lot of detail in them, a lot of names, a lot of history. Um, I have read this one before. Uh, I don't really remember much of it, but um, I am enjoying rereading it and learning more about the history. Um, so like I say, I will carry on reading this into the month of June. Um, although if you've seen my June TBR, that might be asking a lot. I'll see how I go. 
And then the next book is the one that I will potentially finish today and that is Remember When which is a bind up of two novellas by Nora Roberts slash J.D. Robb. They are the same author. Um, J.D. Robb is the pseudonym that she uses for writing her um, Eve Dallas series, um, the In Death series and Nora Roberts is her contemporary romance. Um, pseudonym that she uses. So Remember When is a join up of two short stories, one by Nora Roberts, so set in the contemporary world, and one by J.G. Robb, so set in the world of Eve Dallas. And the Nora Roberts is a prequel to the Eve Dallas. Um, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I've read the Nora Roberts one and that one uh, follows Lane Tavish, who is trying to build a life for herself in small town America and along comes um, a face from her past who blows it all out of the water and then along comes another character Max Gannon who she falls in love with. It is complete insta-love um, which I didn't get at all. Uh, I enjoyed it, I enjoyed the ride with them. There's been a jewellery heist and Max is investigating it because he needs to retrieve the stolen um, diamonds for the insurance company and for the owners um, and he believes that Lane might be part of the plot. Um, it goes from there obviously and they fall in love so obviously uh, we have a happy ever after and then we move in to the J.D. Robb novella which is 50 plus years on from the original story featuring Lane and Max. This time we are following Samantha who is the granddaughter of Lane and Max and she's written a story about how her grandparents met and it turns out that not all the diamonds um, from the heist were recovered and somebody in New York goes on a murdering spree because they've decided that they need to find the missing diamonds and that Samantha knows something about it and in comes Eve, Dallas and Rourke and the team to solve the murders and at the same time they're trying to uh, look into the mystery of the diamonds because they think it might have a link to the actual murders themselves. I haven't quite finished it, I'm on about 80-85% of the way through the whole thing. Um, I'm racing towards the conclusion of catching the killer. I think I know who the killer might be or how they're linked to the case. I will wait to see if I am right but I'm looking forward to finishing that one later today. So let's talk about the books that I managed to finish this month and I had a good month, um, not as good as I say as I have done in the previous two months but I finished five books. Four of those were from the actual TBR I had set for the month, the other two books that were on the TBR I've already talked about because they're in progress um, and the fifth book um, is one that I picked up on a complete mood, win, mood whim um and because I, we've been talking about the series at work but I'll come on to that later on. So the first book that I finished I decided to flip my reading this month. Normally I start with the In Death pick but I actually decided to go with one of the TBR spin picks. and this one is Frozen Desires by Jessie Donovan. It's the second book in her Asylum for Magical Threats series and in this book we are following the sister of the main character from the first book and her name is Camilla and she is teaming up with a man also came up in the first book but not very much his name is Marco and he's really attracted to Cam and she's attracted to him but she will not admit it um, and she has trust issues because she's had problems with uh, boyfriends in the past who have used her and it's all about their <clears throat> their magical powers that they have and how they use them um, and also Marco has a bit of a mystery because he has quite strong magical powers but he's not really telling anyone just how powerful they are because uh, the fact that he is a master of his powers is frowned upon in the world that they live in. It's set in Earth. Um, the, see, this book is actually taking place um, in various parts of South America. There's a mystery to be solved, they have to find a certain person and um, 
get them to safety uh, but there is danger for them on the way and they grow to fall in love as they go through all these dangerous missions it's a nice fun light read i thoroughly enjoyed it um it carried on nicely from where the last book picked off albeit a completely different setting completely different couple but characters from the initial book do come back into it and we do carry on um, a storyline uh, from that first book which I think is going to follow into the third book there are so far there are four books in the series and I understand it isn't finished um, because the characters just aren't calling to Jessie at the moment she is very very immersed in the world of her dragon shifters uh, which is also a series that I recommend but I really enjoyed Jessie's writing this book was no exception and I'm looking forward to picking up book three uh, hopefully in the near future so my second finish of the month was also the second spin on the wheel of TBR. So like I say, I really did reverse my reading this month. This book is The Last Nansara by Christine Cicciarelli. And it's following Asha, who is a dragon slayer. And she um, is trying to win her father's affection. And she decides to do that, that she will try and kill the most powerful dragon in the land. Um, however someone tries to stop her who is the leader of the rebellion against the dragon slaying it turns out that there is this whole twisted plot um surrounding the dragon slaying and the reasons for dra slaying the dragons and everything is not as it seems and i really enjoyed the unfolding of this mystery as the book went on and how this is being told not only through asha finding things out but also memories that are being provided by the dragons as she comes across them, which I thought was a brilliant, brilliant idea um, because it seems that Asha has forgotten a lot of things uh, from her past and we're, we're finding that out at the same time as she does. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Apparently this is the first in a series. I'm not sure from the end of the first book where it could go. So it's not one that I'm sold on continuing yet. I thoroughly enjoyed The Last Namsara and I would recommend you read it. I personally think it could be read as a standalone. At some point in the future, I might look into uh, following on with the rest of the series and see where, how that picks up and where it goes. Um, but for now, I'm quite happy to have left it where it is. And I'm glad that it came out on the spin for the month. So the next finish, I then went to my set TBR for the month. And that was Imitation in Death by J.D. Robb. It is um, the next in the series of the In Death books I had to read and I thoroughly enjoyed it. This time around she has to uh, find a serial killer. However, this serial killer is imitating serial killers from the past. So Jack the Ripper, Ted Bundy, they're all in there. Um, and I actually was quite intrigued by this. I've never been intrigued by true crime before, but reading this book actually made me want to look into the background stories. Um, obviously, I know, uh, being from the UK, I've heard about Jack the Ripper. Um, I've heard a little bit about Ted Bundy, um, but I did, I did recognise the Jack the Ripper part of it. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, it was a great ride as ever. There's growth in Eve as a person. Um, but this time we're looking quite a bit more through Peabody's eyes because Peabody is lining up to take the detective exam in this book and it's how all of that is affecting her as well. So I'm really loving the human growth that we're getting through these books and seeing the changes in Eve as a person um, and also the changes in the people around her as well. Um, and I think pretty much that is as much what I'm reading these books for now. If you want uh, a crime fiction book with a little bit of um, romance, which includes some sex in it, then give these books a go. I thoroughly recommend them. Um, and as I said at the beginning of the video, when I talked about the books that I've started but not finished, I would actually check out um, Nora Roberts as well, because I actually really enjoyed her writing too. So the fourth book that I finished this month was my mood pick and this is Weird Sisters by Terry Pratchett and this is purely because at work I can't remember why but we started talking about Terry Pratchett and the series and 
had I got to Weird Sisters yet um, because this is the second in the Witches series but it's the one where we really get to know Granny Weatherwax, Nanny Og and Magrat um, and it starts out, it's a little bit of a retelling of Hamlet. Um, Hamlet is not a Shakespeare play that I really know lots about. Um, I know there's some kind of family plot with uncles and stepfathers and murders and um, but I just really loved the opening lines and closing lines of this book. Um, they just, in his usual inimitable style, he just turns something completely serious uh, that we all love on its head and turns it into humour. Um, I love Terry Pratchett. This has given me a real taste for more. Um, I'm not going to get to any in June, but I think July I might have to pick up uh, book seven in the series um, because this is book six. Uh, I'm reading them in um, the actual uh, publication order. Um, I've read them in bulk, so I've read the Death um, series. I've read the Night Watch series. I've read uh, the Veterinary series, um, and I've read. I've all. I've enjoyed them all um, that I've read. I've read some of the random ones, but not all of them. Uh, but yes, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. If you've, if you've not tried Terry Pratchett, I wouldn't start with The Colour of Magic, the first one. Uh, my actual first book that I ever read was The Last Continent, which is a real Mickey take out of Australia. Um, so I apologise to Australians for laughing at that, um, but it was hilarious. Uh, and Terry Pratchett pokes so much fun at the UK um, as well. But yes, you do. Um, I, I, the Witches would be a good starting point or Death would be a good starting point um, if you want to try Terry Pratchett before going through and reading them chronologically. But I'm really enjoying the reread. Um, I, I'm, I started it a few years ago uh, and I am getting into the books now where uh, Terry Pratchett had really got into his stride and really found his style and just loved picking this up. I'm really glad that I did that this month. And then my final finish for the month was the book club pick. And this month we had The Switch by Beth O'Leary. The two main characters in this book are Lena and Eileen, uh, who are grandmother and granddaughter. And Lena has some issues at work and her bosses tell her she has to take a two month sabbatical because she needs time away. Um, her grandmother suggests that she goes and stays in Yorkshire where she lives only the grandmother is going to go to London and live Lena's life and it's a great premise I really enjoyed the idea um I think the execution could have been a little bit better I did thoroughly enjoy it and I have given it four stars if you look at my Goodreads rating now this is because I loved Eileen absolutely adored Eileen and her story in London and with internet dating and learning, being absorbed into the modern world um, because she's a bit cut off from it in Yorkshire. Uh, they don't tend to experience it so much. They Their mobile phones don't really have internet access and yes, um, you know, iPhones don't exist. <laughs> um, they do, but you know, they're, they're a bit behind the times. Um, they, they've not caught up. Their grandchildren haven't really kept them uh, modernised. Um, but they, she's learning about this whole world and then her just can do and will do attitude and how she helps everyone around her and um, makes the best of things. And I'd love to be a member of the Silver Shoreditch Club. If that is a real thing, count me in, um, because that was brilliant how she uh, embraced all of that as well and got that going. What led it down for me was... Lena in Yorkshire, she was then immersed into her grandmother's world. However, I feel like uh, Beth O'Leary didn't give as much attention to the detail with Lena as she did with Eileen. There were lots of unexplored themes um, that were in Lena's story. And there were elements that I could have done without. However, I did enjoy it. I could see where it was going. Um, and... I did feel that actually it did what it was meant to. It just could have been written better for me, which is why I knocked off the star um, because it didn't quite, it was like it had been written by two different people. Um, so the Eileen and the Lena parts. Um, 
but I would recommend it if you want something that's light, fun, breezy, um, get you out of a slump, then this book would be it. So those are all the books that I got into this month. Uh, how did you do in the month of May? Please let me know in the comments down below. I love chatting with you all down there. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, then please give me a thumbs up. And if you're not already, then subscribe to the channel. And I will see you all next week with another video. Bye.